yesterday morning or the morning before, I felt to uh, text a friend of mine, young friend in Israel, who's an Orthodox Jew. And he's single, and uh, we had amazing connections while we were there uh, of the spiritual kind. Uh, although we didn't do any pro proselytizing or evangelizing, uh, we shared presence, God's presence, uh, as opposed to the, as you might say, the stereotypical gospel. And how it went down then, and then this yesterday, uh, how, how it went down back then was, when we were just talking about God, because he was in a rabbinical school, and as we were talking about that, spirit of prophecy came on me, and I said, you know what we're talking about? Well, that's happening right now. So I turned around with tears in my eyes and prophesied to him in the in the seat right behind me in the car, and we both felt it in very dynamic ways. In fact, he uh, acknowledged, he said, this has been a most unusual evening. Well, then yesterday when I texted him because I was concerned he'd been constrained or drafted back into the military and asked how he was doing, a few things won't belabor the point, but as I was going on and I said, uh, you know, I've never forgotten that moment with you and I. In fact, in, as I'm texting, again, the spirit of prophecy came on me or my spirit man just began to well up. And I said, Ezra, that's his name, it's happening again. And so I just said, uh, well, I'll tell you what I wrote him and then I'll tell you his response. I says, I pray that in your personal times with Hashem, which is their name for God, uh, you have surprisingly tender and deeply moving times with him, accompanied with tears that take you by surprise, even when you may be least expecting it. May the stream, in other words, the, the flow of heaven, open up just for you in powerful ways to inspire you, lead you, and inspire you, empower you, and protect you. Anyway, and then the next paragraph, and I says, and right now, I'm feeling that same feeling that I had with you that wonderful evening back a few years ago. And I said, here's what I feel to say. You're going to be a leader to many in modeling how to live in this most amazing stream of his presence. You will feel the kabod or kabod of God come upon you. It will overcome you with a sense of providence, purpose, direction, and anointing. Just like when David of old experienced the kabod of God upon him, he became invincible. When he said in Psalm 18, I could run through a troop or leap over a wall. I said, expect it to happen. It's going to happen to you. Hashem will use you in definitive ways to raise up a standard of heaven's favor upon you. You are amazing and exemplary in many ways. But in addition to those ways, I feel Hashem is going to begin to manifest his tangible presence in you and upon you. Next paragraph. I said, oh boy, I hope you're feeling what I'm feeling right now. It makes me know even more how much Hashem or God loves you. And uh, I, I was really quite moved at that point. And uh, anyway, his next response immediately was, oh my goodness, he says, I sure am feeling it. No words can express my appreciation and happiness for your blessings. So a couple more little exchanges, but I felt like I was giving away those pieces, those yodes. It wasn't in the package of stereotypical evangelism and the gospel. It was in presence that transcends the brain. It didn't have to come through logic. It came through the anointing in the moment. And, uh, Anyway, I'm very confident we will have more uh, in interchanges ahead, but just a, a fun, very alive, and kind of surprising experience took place just yesterday morning. Giving away that flesh and that blood, and I didn't actually identify by name what it was, but it's like Paul said, I didn't come to you with fancy words, but with the demonstration of the power and in the spirit. So uh, just, just fun stuff. So 
Good job, Kendra. Thanks for sharing that story and that encounter. You helped open up some new things to us.